Hey guys, what's going on? Chris here with Shughead Gaming with another episode in my series aimed at covering peripherals and quality of life products coming out for the VR scene. My hope is to bring you honest and detailed information along with my first-hand impressions to not only inform you of interesting VR-related products across all VR platforms, but most importantly, to let you know if it's worth picking up. Let's get into it. Today, we are looking at the Mark III VR Gunstock by Virtual Rifle Systems. Diversifying my VR experiences to the Oculus Quest and PC side of things, the choice of quality shooters was now immense, but I missed my aim controller, and decided to do my research and purchase one of the many VR Gunstock options available to Quest and PC VR users. A VR Gunstock is essentially just a controller holder designed to hold and line up the two motion controllers as they would line up if the user was holding a real rifle, while additionally adding a rigid and tactile component simply lacking to the VR shooter experience and great enhancing the immersion factor. Maybe most importantly though, a VR gunstock has the intended result of eliminating hand and arm movement and subsequently improving accuracy. Not sponsored in the least and spending my own money, I originally went to purchase a gunstock from ProTube, who currently seems to be dominating the market. I however decided to go another route with the Mark III by Virtual Rifle Systems, as it simply seemed the better option. Let's see if I made the right choice. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button and if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing and for video updates, hit that bell icon. And if you'd like to see more VR content from Shughead Gaming, check me out on the socials below. Taking a look at the overall design and build quality of the Mark III, I think most would agree it is hands down one of the best looking gun stocks available. And yes, I know you won't see the stock when in VR, but I found the mental image of what I looked like in real life when combined with the fact that it felt like a real rifle in my hands was a huge contributor to the overall immersion factor. Sure, there are some cool looking 3D printed options that look like real guns, but when looking at the Mark III model, you will quickly see it is designed around function first and aesthetic second, as almost every part of the rifle stock serves a purpose when in game, but more on that shortly. As a replacement for the Mark II rifle stock, the big upgrade is the massive leap in build quality with virtual rifle systems switching from 3D printed to injection molded units. Besides moving away from the whole DIY feeling of previous iterations, injected molded construction also gives the stock increased durability and simply feels like a product you would expect from a large and established company. In fact, for gun nerds out there, the stock is so true to life in its design that you can actually attach real barrels or butts if you wish, going as far as attaching authentic attachments via the real design as it is also real world spec. In addition, for those looking to make the stock look just that bit more authentic, the Virtual Rifle System store offers a selection of 3D printed add-ons in the form of mock muzzles, shoulder stock, and optic attachments. They of course offer nothing to the stock's performance, but they look cool. Shipping in three pieces, the core rifle goes together quick and easy and feels sturdy and durable once locked into place. The only 3D printed parts still being used, the two controller clamps are up next and tightened down with the use of a provided Allen key. Initially, I was concerned about these scratching or digging into the rings, but despite some extremely light scuffs from my adjustments to the front clamp due to it not actually gripping tight enough, the clamps latched on well without damaging the controllers. In fact, a nice feature of the clamp design is that it allows for adjustment to the rotation angle, making it so you can switch between a more comfortable vertical grip or a more realistic barrel grip. As you can see, I am using Oculus Touch controllers, but for other headset users, the Mark III also supports the controllers from the original Rift, Vive, and Index. Sorry guys, no PSVR support. One thing heavily recommended by Virtual Rifle Systems is the use of a one or two point sling. These are sold on the site separately or can be picked up separately as the push button swivel the stock accepts is the standard size used on real world rifles. And yes, whether you buy a sling or simply tie something on, you definitely want something. Once assembled, you have three adjustment points, all of which are quick released for fast adjustments when in game. There are two butt adjustments with one designed to increase the length of the stock while the other allows the user to lift or raise the barrel to adjust the feel of the stock or more importantly importantly, to ensure the HMD doesn't hit the stock when you're aiming down scope, a point further eliminated by the V-leg notch in the stock itself. The third adjustment, and the one I use constantly, is the non-dominant hand connection point, located on the underbarrel rail. This quick squeeze and slide design allowed me to literally adjust my grip placement with one hand and on the fly, to adjust for whatever rifle I may have picked up in-game. This adjustment is absolutely critical as it enables the user to line up the magnetic attachment point of their non-dominant controller with the in-game grip point, greatly improving the whole process of quick reloads by giving the player an in-game guide to reconnect with the stock. And speaking of controller attachment points, this leads me to my primary reason I chose to go with the Virtual Rifle Systems over the more common ProTube or MagTube. 
Simply put, the idea of pulling my hands on and off the top of these stocks seemed to be a massive immersion killer each and every time I reload it. Using a similar magnetic clip approach as the MagTube, the Mark III by Virtual Rifle Systems seemed to be the only quality option that offered under rifle attachment. Now the question was, did this approach affect tracking? Especially a concern for inside out tracking units where the HMD needs to see the controllers to facilitate tracking. In addition, did the clamp attachments put undue stress on the controllers and how would the unit as a whole hold up under frantic in-game use? Using any gun stock in VR makes initially for a very cumbersome experience as you figure out a system for when to connect your controllers, which hands when, and really just figuring out how to handle an additional piece of hardware that you can't see when you're in the headset. There are no two ways about this guys, you need a sling, and you will find yourself often pulling your non-dominant hand off the stock to reload and likely both hands off the stock at times. Regardless, weighing in at slightly over 2 pounds, the Mark III isn't heavy but you also won't want to carry it for prolonged sessions. Personally, I love the style of sling and push button swivel offered by Virtual Rifle Systems as it connected and felt like real world rifle design. Meaning, the way it slung over my chest worked the way it does in the real world. Of course, a 3 foot piece of rope would work too, so you do you. When using the Mark III in games, some small design choices start to come to light, mainly in the design of the magnetic clipping system. Magnets are strong, yet not too strong so that pulling off a hand is immersion breaking. On the non-dominant hand, the attachment point has been designed with a small notch inside the already deep magnetic attachment point. These two features, when put together, create a connection point that won't pop out on the sides or from the front, and instead must be slightly tipped at the back to release. This is a subtle movement, and within minutes I wasn't even thinking about it when in play, but loved the extra stability. The rear hand attachment point is similarly designed but also adds in more forward support to help hold the stock when reloading. In addition, the stock is designed so that the rear connection point can be pulled back on and butted up against the rear of the stock, making for a quicker attachment and an easier process when trying to get the first controller on a slung stock when blind in the headset. These two attachment points make for a playing experience that actually felt more stable and robust the harder I pulled it back into my shoulder. In fact, my only real design criticism is that the rail slide attachment point for the non-dominant hand does have a bit of a wobble to it, giving that hand a slightly sloppy feel at times, especially when not pulling the stock tight in combat. Honestly though, this is a minor complaint as I rarely gave it much thought and would not want to lose the slide mechanic in exchange for some extra stability. Finally, tracking was for the most part very solid, with only slight occlusion issues cropping up occasionally when the stock was being held low for an extended period of time. Interestingly, this was much less of an issue with higher quality titles, so it is likely due in part to the overall tracking in-game and not exclusively due to the gun stock blocking any tracking. As for the clamps themselves, I have actually left them on my controllers for the past month regardless of what game I've been playing and with no discernible drop in tracking quality. Similarly to my experience when I first started using a force feedback racing wheel for racing games, using a gun stock in VR is a learning process and one in which you will likely see your game performance drop as you learn to adapt to the additional hardware. I personally sucked unbelievably bad at first and honestly wanted nothing more than to put the stock down and go back to free hand movement. My arms felt tired and I simply felt awkward, finding the simple task of reloading a massive pain in the ass as I struggled to find the attachment point after reloads, often resulting in embarrassing deaths as I sat in the street with my virtual pants down. About 15 hours in and I still suck, but things are getting better. I now actually like the additional weight as it gives the immersion of holding an actual piece of military hardware. Additionally, I can begin to feel muscle memory kicking in. I'm still not always quick on my reloads, but damn, my accuracy game has certainly improved by leaps and bounds, with the stock making target allocation and gun alignment second nature. Personally, I still find two-hand detachment a huge pain, but a quick search of more skilled players on YouTube shows that this is also just a matter of time in and muscle memory. Admittedly though, testing dozens of guns across a dozen of the best two-handed shooters in VR4 my review is not how you get good, as learning a few guns in a specific game is certain to greatly improve your familiarity with a gun stock combination. Excitedly though, VR Rifle System seems to be testing out a new grip design that allows the player to forego the front magnetic clip entirely in exchange for an actual grip attachment designed for use while still holding your controller. Those who have used the beta version of it says it eliminates much of the reload frustrations and works brilliantly to mitigate panic reload drama, so I cannot wait to try it when it officially releases. As for game compatibility, I found games that handled guns in a more authentic fashion lent themselves better to the use of a stock, the core three being Pavlov, Contractors, and Onward, in which all three were simply better games because of the stock, adding not only a remarkable sense of immersion, but a significant increase to gun accuracy. This illustrated most significantly when using a long-range sniper rifle, where I slid the front 
gripped far forward and extended the butt, perfectly mimicking the on-screen hand and gun placement, subsequently drastically eliminating hand sway. Other solid titles include Boneworks, despite some wonky arm placement, Zero Caliber, and War Dust, along with the three Battle Royale titles of Standout, Virtual Battlegrounds, and The Last Player, with The Last Player having options for calibrating on-screen gun placement to match gun stocks, which should honestly be used as an industry standard for two-handed gun shooters moving forward. Bottom line, all these titles work just fine with titles that involve non-gun holding actions in game simply requiring much more time to acclimate as you learn how to handle the stock when disengaged from both hands at the same time. And then, there are a handful of titles that straight up weren't designed with the stock in mind. Titles such as Phantom Covert Ops, Zero Killed, and Payday 2 either just didn't have the game mechanics to facilitate the gun stock or simply delivered incredibly skewed gun placement when compared to real life, making them unplayable. I'm looking at you, Zero Killed. And that brings me to my final review. A gun stock is definitely a luxury purchase to be sure and not required to enjoy first person shooters in VR, but like a steering wheel and pedal set for gamers who like to race, if you have the means, it can simply be a better way to play, offering not only next level immersion but after a bit of an adjustment period superior game performance too. Like it or not, the simple fact is that if you're trying to be competitive in any of the core VR shooters, chances are the guys on the top of the leaderboards are all using gun stocks. For those not used to a VR gun stock, I won't lie, it's initially a lot of hardware to deal with and for a while, I just didn't really enjoy it. Every move felt cumbersome, awkward, and simply more work. The fact is that you're not only financially investing in your future game immersion, you need to invest the time and patience as well. I wouldn't say I'm there yet, but I'm certainly on my way to having the Mark III feel normal in VR. So is the Mark III Virtual Rifle Systems the best in class gun stock I hoped it would be? Almost. Despite a few minor issues, the build quality is amazing, the gun stock is without a doubt the best looking stock in the market, and its underbarrel magnetic clip design works as advertised. My concerns about the additional pressure on the Oculus controller rings is still something I'm keeping my eye on, but they seem to be handling a moderate amount of aggression quite well. That being said, I wouldn't advise reefing on the controllers when latched in, and I would probably keep this away from kids who might not respect it. Admittedly, I haven't yet tried a Mag 2, but I simply cannot see its top-loading design besting the Mark III in immersion or form factor. However, this doesn't come without a price, and while coming off best in class, the Mark III is also priced as such, with the base model retailing between $183 and $226 US, with price varying on your type of HMD. This base package includes the three-piece rifle stock and the controller connectors for your given HMD, with a sling and push-button swivel connector adding another $24. Comparatively, the MagTube currently retails for $165 US and includes a sling and connector. However, the Mark III is made and shipped from the US with the MagTube coming out of France, so depending on where you live, the shipping alone could be the difference in price. Additionally, for those really wanting to go full bore with the immersion, ProTube offers both a bipod and haptic feedback attachment, with the latter designed to replicate gun kickback. And while Virtual Rifle Systems has mentioned this is currently being developed, there is no concrete plans around a future release. As for game support, it's there, and unlike the PSVR aim controller, it simply uses the HMD's existing controllers, mitigating much of the need for developers to support it. In addition, Virtual Rifle Systems has stated support for future controllers, so buying a rifle stock is, for the foreseeable time, future-proofed. Anyways guys, that's it for me. If you're interested in checking out the Mark III further or comparing it to the MagTube, I will leave those links below in the notes. The Virtual Rifle Systems website is in need of some work and can be tough to navigate, but I found their customer service absolutely first rate, and they helped me to figure out exactly what I wanted while also following up post-purchase. Finally, if you're interested in seeing the Mark III in action, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube and especially my Twitch channel, where I will be streaming some of the shooters seen here, Mark III in hand. Thanks again guys for stopping by, and I'll catch you on my next video.